Hello and welcome, it's me, LinkingX2, back again with another draft review. This time it is T1 versus Bro. Will T1 make it to the top four or will Bro make the miracle run and yeah, hope to secure their tiny, tiny chance of making playoffs? You're going to see that in the draft right here. But before we dive into it, make sure to check out the description to find all these social links, Twitter, Twitch, all that good shit. And while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe to not miss out on future draft review stuff. So let's write diving into the action here with the first draft here in the series. The Sun and Moon combo being banned against Bro. Well, it is not something mainly against Umti and Delight, but in general, the, the uh, Diana obviously is the jungler at the moment. Yes, in certain team comps and against certain team comps, something else can be also very devastating. But in general, the Diana is just so good on her own. Scaling, early game clearing, dueling, skirmishing, team fighting, and that the, fa the fact that she is an AP jungler also enables uh, AD lanes more often in the top lane and in the mid lane, of course. But getting here right into the mix, we see Renekton being picked first by uh, Bro. Um, not really a, a fan of that here in this uh, in this context. Renekton has its spot uh, in certain matchups, of course, of course, right? Yes, he is not perfect, but when we're saying he's not perfect, we mean exactly this here. First picking Renekton uh, in B1. Yes, there's the flex potential putting him in, into the mid lane, but that's not really uh, all that useful because he still has similar issues. Yes, he may uh, be able to evade some matchups, but mid lane matchups aren't the best thing for Renekton either. So that's a no-go. Uh, T1 here countering with the Kalista least it, and now Fakers the Blanc being locked in. Wow, 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 wow. Whew, this is getting us excited. I mean, Fakers the Blanc, since like, when was the last time we saw that? Then here T1 picking the Nar uh, in the next phase here for Kana. So uh, that is a decent to good matchup into the Renekton and into the set uh, if either of these two bruisers uh, ends up in the top lane. So it is not the perfect matchup, but it is good and stable. Can secure map pressure from the top lane through, well, pushing. And looking at uh, the rest of the team, Kalista Lissin, LeBlanc, Gnar, they fit right in between. They have all some decent engaged tools. Um, so having com uh, complementary uh, uh, teamfight approaches as well, uh, also a decent, um, decently similar wake up uh, at level six to uh, to one item, and then well, all of them also fall off late game. But well, that's another thing. Next issue for Bro is here with their team comp now fully revealed. Uh, Lilia is the only AP uh, jungler, and Lilia's early game is not that great. They have Lee Sin LeBlanc. So in most cases, they have pressure from jungle and mid. So Lilia will have a yeah tough time if T1 wants that. Then they lack a decent AP uh, AP damage. Next thing, Renekton said, if they fall behind just a slight bit, they do nothing in the game. And well, set ultimate is still there, yes, but that's about it then. And in terms of damage, they're really lacking. And then their only source of damage can easily, right, this is not a far-fetched scenario, easily be only the Aphelios, and then we go back to the main point, Aphelios not being really safe here. So, so overall here, I think T1's comp is a bit more cohesive and a bit more uh, united in their approach, right? They all spike on uh, the same uh, points. They're more all in, right? Is it the better approach? I would say yes, if you draft early aggression or mid game aggression champions, like well, everything they have, um, then double down on it completely. Uh, so overall, I would yeah, yeah give the draft hatch to T1. Let's see if T1 is able to get the first W in this series or if Bro can make a surprise win with their yeah, subpar team comp. If you liked it so far, yeah, don't forget to hit me up with a like, really helps out the channel a lot with YouTube bullying me with their algorithm. Hello and welcome, it's me, LinkingX2, back again in game number two of our Fred Biron vs T1 series. T1 on the back of Faker's iconic LeBlanc managed to get the first W in this series. Will Bro be able 
to equalize the series one to one or will T1 breeze through this with a 2-0 score? Find that one out in the next draft review. But before we get right into it, you know how it goes. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the content so far. And let's get into it. Throw also continues with the Renekton as the first pick. Well, 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 again, I am a question mark pinging this guy. So maybe this time it goes uh, into Hoya's hand. Yes, they swapped out their uh, mid laner. Lava is now again uh, in for Yorang. Um, Lava obviously their standard mid laner. here with their uh, new lineup and their new draft they're looking to have at least more pressure in the lanes from the top lane uh, with the ignite obviously uh, for Gwen uh, Lava hoping uh, to control the mid lane more than uh, his predecessor did and with Hana and Delight now with this bot lane matchup they surely have more pressure down there so bro from like nearly three losing lanes now to three winning or pressuring or pressure capable lanes one here having a bit better scaling than the last time having uh, leblanc as nearly the only champion that really falls off trundle doesn't really get too much value with his ultimate in this one here but still will be uh, yeah, quite nice and quite tanky other than that scaling of ophelios braum and uh viego I, we don't have to talk about that that's apparently uh or that's self-evident that it is very powerful so would I give the lead here in the draft? Honestly, so far I like what T1 has. If you are the better players, uh, getting late game comps usually is what is recommended. Yes, you can try to outskill the opponent because you're like you're better. You can just pick early game and stomp the opponent, um, like T1 did in the mid game in game number one. But usually, if you're the better team, you're not supposed to lose early on. And uh, yeah, if you liked it so far. Or if you like the content in general, stop YouTube from bullying me. So hit me up with a like. It uh, yeah really helps out a lot. And yeah, if you like the content and don't want to miss out on future stuff just like that, subscribe as well. It's completely free. And yeah, there's also the bell. Get notifications whenever I upload, whenever T1 plays, whenever something cool happens. I'm bound to be there. You want to be there too. So yeah, don't miss out on that. Hello and welcome, it's me, back again in game number 3 of our T1 vs Bro series. This time, damn, Freddy Brown was able to equalize the series in a 1v1 fashion. In the final game, will T1 be able to overcome Freddy Brown with a 2-1 score? Or will Bro keep the hope alive for the playoff run? In this third game, T1 and Brown have swapped sides. T1 now on the blue side, first picking the Renekton and looking for the Nidalee. For, well, the Sinner combination. Bro on the other side going for the newest champions, Aphelios and Viego. Completely going with, uh, yeah, books of uh, ability text against uh, Stun and Spear Throw. Besides that, also picking up Nar for Connor again, just like in game number one. Here against Viego or the Gwen. In both cases, he will yeah, have the ranged versus melee advantage and probably set up quite a nice show in the top lane again. Kana has been playing quite great today. So in the band phase, just a quick rundown here for what we saw in the first half. Lucian, Varus and Ryze from T1, which is quite strange, uh, considering that Ryze and Lucian are first pick uh, champions for most teams. Now banning the uh, Thresh and the LeBlanc, LeBlanc against the Renekton. So that's quite sad, right? The uh, matchup was something uh, yeah, Faker played in game number one and game number two. Now they ban it on the opposite end. Uh, not really the highest confident uh, is what this tells me. And the Thrash obviously being banned against Aphelios. Uh, which is quite strange that yeah, Fred Brown didn't pick up the Thrash earlier. But I guess the grand priority was quite high. On the other side, the Ziggs and the Jace, as well as the Diana. Um, Diana obviously standard red side ban. 
the other two are uh, against yeah Kana and uh, Gumayushi as mentioned and then banning two AD carries and well that's a nice idea making Gumayushi more uncomfortable with an uh, unknown AD carry bro picking Silas and Rakan in the last half Silas here against the Renekton in the mid lane not the best matchup um, if you yeah, look at what the champion is designed to do but in the sense of brawling and uh, skirmishing with the other three champions here the Gwen, the Vigo and the Silas obviously the top tier uh, skirmishing champions maybe throw in Akali there maybe in Irelia um, it could get better but these three obviously on the top charts uh, and skirmishing abilities so this will be quite interesting will T1 be able to yeah, get the series back with the 2-1 score on the back of these yeah quite uh thinner and quite uh, more lackluster drafts right not really a huge fan uh it makes sense as a whole it is not something like oh they hate each other well yes the bot lane is more kiting backwards uh but ash braum is not a really a strong identity that warps a team comp uh, or that demands a lot of attention they're quite independent uh, as a duo and can yeah, do their stuff uh, on their own. They don't really need the support of the team too much, but the, also the thing is with that being the case, they also don't really put the team on their back and march uh, upwards uh, Mount Everest. So uh, yeah, on the other side, uh, Bro with a very aggressive mid to late game skirmish comp. Um, in the uh, 5v fights, they don't really have the huge team fight ultimates, but they're skirmishing. Uh, or like the broader uh, identities of their champions. Oof, uh, yeah, 18.2% win rate for Nidalee Renekton. Yikes. T1 is one of this, uh, one of the two wins. But Bro with their comp, um, even though they don't have standard team fight ut uh, utility, their comp as a whole is just getting into the thick of things. And if they reach that point, they can really wreck havoc inside T1's uh, yeah, squishy underbelly. But who will, will come out on top? Will Bro keep the hope alive of the playoffs or will T1 yeah. secure the ninth win and yeah, take a tiny step, a tiny plus one point towards the top four? You can find that out on yourself, watch the game, hope you have great fun with that. But if you enjoyed the content today, hit me up with a like and not to miss out on future content. You might want to subscribe completely free and also ring the bell to get here fast and yeah, get notified of all future videos. So stay safe, have a great time, bye.